Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the High School Star League League of Legends Season 1 Playoffs. We are at the round of 16, brought to you in part by our friends at Twitch TV, Newick, and MSI. We are with Stuy Vestant High School versus Thomas S. Wooten High School. They have, of course, switched sides, and it's going to be Game 2. As Thomas S. Wooten High School is up 1 to nothing in this best of 3. I'm Crusader King here with Cassie Seta. Going to be your Cassie's for this evening. After this best of 3, we'll have one more best of 3 coming up tonight. So, into game 2 now. Going to be some interesting stuff, and we'll see if Stuyvesant can come back in this series. Yeah, Stuyvesant, they played well in game number 1, but Thomas S. Wooten was just so far ahead. Tax in the jungle and absolute terror. He had complete control of not only his own jungle, not only all three of his lanes, but also Stai Vessen's jungle, where we saw Will Kill for Tacos get denied early on after picking up a quick first blood. The second invade from Tax really just set him so very far behind. And this time, we're seeing him on an even more terrifying jungler. He's taking Tax, or, <laughs> he is Tax, <laughs> taking Evelyn in the jungle. You are not gonna see him coming until it's too late. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Yeah, this is there's a few interesting uh, jungle. Well, I mean, okay, Evelyn's not that interesting. It's kind of standard. But Jarvin, we're gonna see some of this. Welcome for Tacos inside. He wants to go for some of that Jarvin, and it's a champion. I mean, we don't we see kind of coming up and play once again. But I think what's more interesting is this really weird jungle movement that's happening right now on the map. Right now, we saw Thomas says Rootin go for a swap. And actually, they wanted to invade, but they are on a board of Bush. The Dark Blade doesn't land. They have a lot of damage on his own to me. And now they're going to be getting in onto him, but Iranium is in here. First Blood comes down two minutes in, but it's followed quickly by Iranium. Getting a kill gets over the wall, but Kofi Tacos runs out of there as well. They do take the two blue buffs and get away, but the First Blood does go over to Thomas S. Wooten. And that's a quick one-for-one -one trade between Wooten and Stive Vesson. Tax and Duskcloud going for the really odd two-switch in the top lane. They don't want to deal with Monkey and Saizo in the bottom after doing well the first time around. Instead, they just want to help Tax get nice and fed, and he was able to get that super easy kill on the Zoma got it to me, who seems as though he may have had a little bit of disconnect trouble. He just kind of walked into both Tax and Duskcloud and took too much yeah. damage, ended up going down for it, and despite Uranium getting in there, he was able to turn it around and uh, pick up that first kill as well, and Uranium got away with his life too. So overall, one for one trade, Stuyvesant, they're doing okay, they're not as far behind as they were the first time around, but already Tax is playing the exact same game as he did in game number one. Yeah, really interesting map movements coming out from these guys here. I mean, they, want, they wanted to go for an invade, they went to support and jungler invade the red buff while they had a lane swap going where the top laner was actually meanwhile jungling over by the right side of the camp and it was like what are they doing and they do get first blood out of it they did lose a first uh with a, a blue buff and uranium is actually holding that blue buff now and we're also seeing more map movements here as we will kill for tacos and zone to me are going and taking wolves so these teams are really just looking to counter jungle counter jungle and counter jungle and it's, I mean, it's kind of what we've been uh, constantly trying oh, to Here comes with Tax in the mid lane. Yeah. Uranium has got the magic shield. He's taking a lot of damage. The red buff is taking out. He doesn't have flash. And Tax picks up yet another kill for Thomas Wooten, as is expected from his hyper aggressive style. But I really like the counterplay coming out from Tacos and Zomagat. Oh it's me. Knowing that they're not going to be able to farm out in the top lane, that Kale is going to be bullied away by Twitch Morgana so fast. They're just going straight into the jungle to try to deny Tax, to try to keep him from snowballing as he is wont to do. Man, they have Kale and they have Kale and Cassidy on the same team. It's like, how did that happen? I like, have no just, idea. I, I feel like it's, it's just such strong champions right now. Yeah, with Jarvan in the jungle and Janna on support, I feel like this is late season two or something. This is some pretty <laughs> crazy team yeah. compositions. And yeah, look Janna. at this Tax collapsing upon Jarvan White. He's going to be spotted out, takes the poison, but he makes it over the wall. Dark Binding finds him. Let's uh. see if there's going to be follow-up. Duskcloud flashes in. Tax gets onto Zoma God. It's me who's running for his life to the turret. Gets blocked by the minions. Is Tax going to go for the dive? No, he's not. He gets one more attack and will kill for Tacos. Escapes with his life as well. So flash burn coming out from White to try to pick up the kill. He's not going to be successful, but he's bullied away both Kale and Jax, which is going to help that top and jungle get fed. Oh, man, uh... Duskcloud playing Morgana once again. He had a lot of nice bindings last game. This game, he started out not so well with the first one going 
the wrong way, but it was a nice one here. Onto Wilco Vital, because unfortunately just weren't able to finish off the kill, but they do have a nice amount of pressure up on that top lane. And it's of course nice for him to just be on a champion he does like. Because last game they actually had the Morgana and a Corky, so this time they get a Twitch going for themselves, which is I don't know, I guess Corky and Twitch you see a lot of nowadays, but Twitch feels a little bit more standard for the 4.9 patch, I think. Yeah, Twitch is really, really scary in 4.9. All he needs to do is get Blade of the Ruin King, and he just does so much AoE percent health tread. Now, we do have Tax looking for a gank onto Uranium. I think he's expecting the level 6 immediate dive, but not going to happen just yet as Uranium's continuing to get bullied out by Soju. And immediately, will kill for Tacos. Goes for the counter flank. He's going to head right back in to try to collapse on the Soju, who's not level 6. Ignite is ticking down. Soju gets brought low, and that... Poor, poor um, Lulu. Yeah, she tasted bait. purple right there. <laughs> yeah, what a bait coming out of Uranium. It's just like, hey, I'm level 5, challenge me. Not even level 6 yet. And unfortunately, Soju took the bait there. And it was just Will Clover Tago's right in position to get that gank going down. And we'll be getting the kill score up 2-2, two to two, which is going to be a nice uh, bit of a trade going in for these two guys here. And, I mean, just kind of a standard gank coming up, had a nice bait going, and just found a blind spot in Soju's, uh, in Soju's map, or I guess, in yeah, for the Soju's map in general. For the time being, Stuyvesant is actually ahead. They're up 400 gold, they've got decent lane control, and Uranium, he's actually finding Tax out with that super early pink. Might even be able to try to pick up a kill if he decides to go all in, but instead, Lulu is going to dissuade him from that. In the bottom lane, it's 66 CS on Monkey. He is feeling so fantastic. He hasn't had to recall. He's doing good in experience. He's got some solid damage onto that turret. And he's denying BB Minion farm. Zoma got it to be in the top, has got a much easier time trading with that top lane because Kale can switch over. But here comes Tax, caught out in the river. He's taking a lot of damage. Will kill for Tacos isn't level six, so he has the Cataclysm, but Tax drops the flash defensively to escape. And it looks like he's going to be denied a bit harder this game. Yeah, he was looking to take down that pink ward. He saw it earlier. He's like, hey, this is my mortal enemy. I have to take it down. And twice it kind of got him, in, got him into a bit of trouble, took a nice bit of damage from it. But this time he has to burn flash, which is obviously not a great thing to do. Um, just kind of for a reason like that. So we're going to have that flash down. Pink ward still alive. I'm kicking. Flash for a pink, and then you don't even get the pink? It's not a good trade. It's, it's like the immortal question, turret versus dragon, flash for a pink. I think we all know. I feel like turret versus dragon might be more arguable than a flash and a pink one. <laughs> there's, there's definitely <laughs> two different schools of thought when approaching that. But for the flash versus pink, I think we can all agree you don't want to flash for a pink. Yeah, definitely. It's 100 gold <laughs> for using a five-minute summoner spell. Oh, man, so... We're with it though, 2 to 2 right now, early in the game. Hashtag worth. Yeah. 400 gold in favor of Stuyvesant, 9 minutes in. They're just playing out a nice slow landing phase, denying Tax his ever present jungle presence. Yeah, no, I just realized if you want to talk about schools for League, there's Roger Morris University, <laughs> which is having scholarships for students that are in the high school still, they can apply for a scholarship there anyway. It's all about that scholarship. Yeah. Stuff. But it's still, it's interesting stuff. Anyway. It's, it's pretty fancy. Game. Back yeah, in just, my like, day. just like got me all off on the school thing. I was thinking about like, which school was that? Which college was that? Mm -hmm. Back in anyway. my day, we had to play League of Legends for fun. We didn't get paid to do it. <laughs> now yeah. these youngins coming in and showing Leads us how to play with money. Yeah. See, I would get that if I wasn't bad. Oh, but here's Will Kill for Taco. He's going for a gank at the top. He's got Cataclysm. Soul Shackles is dropped. He's going to find White, who stealths away. Double Stun going to find Will Kill for Tacos. Invulnerability is going to soak some of that damage for now, but the moment it tapers off, White gets a few more attacks. Teleport on the bottom as Uranium is going in, using that level 6 Cassidy to try to burst Tax down. Sazza forced to flash away, but Retarded Monkey gets onto Tax. He picks up that kill. Another kill picked up for Stuyvesant. Now this is Mignon. Way too far forward, taking a bit too much damage. But for the time being, he's going to walk away for his life in Uranium. Getting that assist there at the cost of a teleport. 
Yeah, teleport coming in. I just realized it's a teleport cast, and they have two teleports for some oh, nice. Oh my god, it's me finding white. He flashes forward. Heal goes down. He takes the spell shield. It's not enough. So, oh my god, it's me. Now getting oh, on man. the dust cloud. He's got a lot He's of double. damage with that super fast Doran's ring. He's got attack speed. Chasing dust cloud down. Gets into the bush. The dark finding misses. And so oh my god, it's me. Picks up another wow. kill for Stive Besson. Five to two. One thousand two hundred gold lead. That gank for World Code for Tacos was definitely worth it there as he got in there. Zone gets me. He's playing Kale, man. Kale's scary. How'd you like Kale and casting it in the same game? Kale makes his play up top lane, gets a 2v1 just before casting was teleporting down to the bottom lane. Got out very closely with his life, but still was able to help get a kill. And now towers are coming down here in the bottom lane. And actually, there's also a tower taken by Tom Sess Wooten as he take down the one in the middle lane. Right now, BB Mignon's gonna have to be careful. The monkey is gonna be caught way too far forward on the recall. He dashes in, but uh, doesn't get vision of that Shivana. Half man. Dragon Lady, she, she's just gonna hide in the bush. Yeah, place is just. It's a nice place to hide. Yeah. <laughs> Hiding in the bush? Is it not bush or brush? Positioning. I don't even know, okay? It's not good positioning from Monkey there, unfortunately. Oh, but Zoma got it's me. Finds himself caught out by Zoma. Uh, White, actually, that's the other way around. White finds himself caught out, forced to stealth away. That's the power of that Nasher's Tooth Kale. Okay. Doing some incredible, incredible damage by maxing out the Righteous Fury after the oh, Reckoning man. nerf. And he's going in, taking damage from the turret, but he's just going to intervene a lot of it. He's ticking away. For going to be forced to flash, but he doesn't have it. He goes down Middle to that. Lane. And it's a trade. And meanwhile, Soju in the mid lane, forced to use the wild growth, but he's locked in the Cataclysm with nowhere to go. He's taking a lot of hits. The uh, Rift Walk from Uranium brings him under the turret. Soju's still alive. Will kill for Tacos. He's going to get a revenge kill, but he might get one more off of this. A single turret shot is necessary, uh -huh. and Tacos escapes with his life. So Narrow. close right there. Man, that was a late flash from Soju. I feel like he could have done the flash. Oh, he pretty much flashed when the barriers went down, but Saizo was taking some damage in the middle lane, and he brushes him off with a gust of wind. Anyway, Soju, though, definitely was able to delay that one. Made Uranium cost for going under that tower to dive in. And obviously, the tension from Uranium, picking up a few assists from it. He's getting a few kills stacked up as well. And top lane Kale is doing very well in the solo 1v2 lane. He's Three, two, and one, and it's still a really nice lead for him. And tax can get found out a bit. Top end tag goes down. Dust Cloud is dueling out, though. Locked down by Dust Cloud. Soul Shackles finds the stun. Here's White with the follow up. Let's see if the intervention is on cooldown. Yes, it is. And oh my God, it's me. Goes down. Now it's 13 minutes in. And Thomas Wooten has just taken advantage over Sty Vescent. They're down That's in kills, good. but they're up in turrets. And look at this, Tom, Sty Vescent. They're actually yeah. going to collapse under the dragon. Castus Curse strikes us again. Last, yesterday, I think we mentioned something like it, but I just mentioned he's doing well. So GSP speed is doing well at the top lane, and what do you know? He goes down right after I mentioned it. However, for his team, though, Stive Vesson is able to pick up the dragon, which is going to give him a nice amount of gold. However, it's still fairly even. Obviously, Thomas has reached having an extra tower. That's a nice amount of work there. Just getting that one up in the top and you taking out Zomg, it's me. You're gonna, I guess, level him down a bit. Gets a kill over to White as well, which is always, always great to go on to your AD carry. And still, kill goes over for Stivescent, but gold lead is fairly even right now. Yeah, and it's a very close game between these guys. I mean, Stivescent, they had an advantage earlier on, and because of that, they're able to take the dragon off of it. But they're just not taking as convincing a lead over Thomas S. Wooten that I would like for them to have been taking. This far, they should be putting a lot more pressure onto the map. They should be contesting more objectives and be taking more turrets, but they aren't controlling the map. And because of this, Thomas S. Wooten is able to just keep on trading objective for objective and kill for kill, and that's keeping them in the game. Yep, so... We're seeing top lane a possible gank coming in. Tax is looking to get it. A little bit and of trading going on. Well. Looks like Dust Cloud way too far forward. He's getting locked down by the red buff. Doesn't have the flash and isn't even going to try bother using the exhaust. He knows that he's dead. And it's a one for one trade in top and bottom lane as it's now seven and nine in favor of Stuyvesant for the time being. And they're just continuing to slowly increase this lead, but they have got to start making some more powerful rotations. And because of that, we're seeing them push towards this turret in the bottom lane. 
two for one trade here in the bottom lane. They took down two members there. With a very successful gank, I think they're going to be going for an inner tower as well. Should be able to easily pick this one up. The teleport's coming again, and Saizo's taking damage. Monsoon is dropped out in order to keep Saizo alive, but it's not going to be enough. Soju uses the wild growth. He's getting on the monkey now, but just doesn't have enough to burn him. Here's yeah. White coming in with a bit of follow up using that spray and fright. And retarded monkey taking too much tax flashes to get the follow up back, and he's embraced culling not enough tax. Picks up yet another kill, leaving both the wild kill for Takas and Uranium all by themselves, who teleported in. Soul Shackles has dropped, double kill picked up for White, and Uranium going to be forced to use this Rift Walk to escape. Question is, is the cooldown going to be enough? It just tapers off, but Tax is flanking around the edges. Uranium is running for his life right now. This is a really tough spot. He takes a turret hit. He's actually still alive. Tax almost in range. He makes it over the wall. Uranium escapes with his life. Wow, what a play by him. Just getting out of there, being that slippery cast, and that he is. However, the trade does not go in favor of Thomas S. Wooden and Sty, uh, not in favor of Stuyvesant there. He lost quite a few members because of that bottom lane aggression. They do pick up a tower, but it was just Thomas S. Wooden had a very quick response to that one. It sent everyone they had down to that bottom lane very quickly to pick up a few kills there. Bottom lane out of tower going to be taking quite a bit of damage. And middle lane is going to get pushed in here by Thomas S. Wooden. Now we do have Wooten shoving down the mid lane, trying to see if they can take a turret. They've got decent wave clear with that Glitter Lance, and if they can get White back to full health and joining up with them, but instead he's running away from Monkey in the bottom lane, taking too much from that very powerful Lucian. That's going to be a Sheen Bloodthirster to only the Blade of the Ruin King on White. And remember, this is the 4.9 patch, so that Bloodthirster Sheen is going to be doing a lot more because of the overcharging stats. But here's Tax in the jungle. Finding Will Kill for Tacos. He's going to be turned around upon as Uranium flashes in. Cataclysm goes down. Intervention finds Will Kill as Zoma Got It's Me comes in from behind. Will Kill escapes with his life for the time being. Uranium forced to get out of this. Zoma Got It's Me suddenly isolated. Decizo comes around from behind. Uranium jukes away, but he's not going to have enough. And Zoma Got It's Me over the wall picks up one kill. And Soju is trying to chase him down, trying to pick up the kill. He does not have enough damage and he's just kiting it out. Uranium gets one. Monkey coming over the wall for another. Will Kill for Tacos gets a third. And suddenly, this wow. is supposed to look like an ace as White is nowhere to be seen. Four kills for zero. And Stuyvesant dragged that out just perfectly. Yeah, what a fight coming out there by Stuyvesant. Kills getting in for Zomji, it's me, and Monkey are going to be great for their team. And pretty much just found them out of track there. And Zomji, it's, uh, Zomji, it's me was just so slippery as well. Able to get away from that. But bottom lane, we're seeing trades. Yeah, White getting caught out with that Saizo. And he's going to end up going down. Trading a support for... An AD carry definitely always in favor of that team that loses the support and gets the AD carry. And just like this, Stuyvesant, they're up 15 to 11. And I see in the chat you guys are talking about the pronunciation for Stuyvesant. I've got another tab open in another computer, and I have listened to four different videos over the course of this game. One is Stuyvesant, one is Stuyvesant, one is Stervesant with an R, and I honestly have no idea, so I apologize if we're butchering yeah, the pronunciation. Can't they say Stuyvesant? Yeah, I, I apologize completely, but for the time being, regardless of the pronunciation, they are winning. Up 4,000 gold over Thomas S. Wooten, up four kills and a dragon. They just are setting a dominant pace, but here's Uranium. Could be spotted out by Tax. He's not going to try to contest this as Saizo is waiting in the wings. We're going to be hanging around here. Saizo, oh, he's completely caught out. And, and he does use the Crucible fails. to survive. And that was the Soul Shackles. Traded for the Mikhail's Crucible. They have pretty similar cooldowns. Yeah. So overall, I would say it's even. Look over Taco's gonna get caught up a bit, but a little bit of positioning around the dragon. Juicy up in the top lane. We've been talking a little bit about him. Don't get to me on this tail. Looking really good right now. 5.2, obviously on the best score, but his CS is much larger than his opponents and actually Tyra Dragon will be going down. Oh, it's stolen, stolen by Tax! He manages to get the smite. Will kill for Tacos drops oh, him with boy. Cataclysm, but he's gonna be really low. BB Mignon forced to go in the intervention, keeps him alive, but he's going down immediately afterwards as White comes in from behind. Blade of the Rune King and Spraying Prey is just doing work. Saizo running for his life, but so my god, it's me and Monkey are just going to town. Dark Binding finds me on the death throes of Dust Cloud, which allows that very scary White to escape and again 
Stuyvesant come out on top. 20 minutes in, they have taken yet... Uh, no, they actually lost the dragon, but they've got enough of an advantage to be able to take a turret. They might even go for two. There's only one surviving member standing for Wooten right now. Yeah, it was a great intervention coming out from Zonji. It's me putting on Wilco for Tacos. Obviously, Wilco for Tacos did end up dying, but still left him alive pretty much right under like a hairline of health. Had him survive. And it was actually looking good for Thomas S. Wooten for a little bit because White was coming in from the side. He had spray and pray going, but unfortunately just did not have a front line left alive. Teleport's coming in all over the place from these two teams. But Stuyvesant does come up on top in terms of the team fight and does take a tower in the middle lane. They trade that one, I think it was like four for two, I believe it was. Yeah, a was huge definitely... trade. And they took the dragon and two turrets. And just like that, Stuyvesant have increased their gold lead to 4,200 gold. They've got two turrets, and they did lose the dragon, but they've got some very dominant map control for the time being. And with these major item pickups that we're seeing coming out of Stuyvesant right now, that's going to be the Triforce on Lucian, the Staff of the Seraphim and Rod of Ages finished on Uranium, and the completed Runan's Hurricane on Zolmi got it to me. They are going to do some copious, copious damage onto uh, Thomas Wooten if they get into another fight. The only thing that worries me is Will Kill for Tacos. He's been getting in the front line with really solid cataclysms, but he just keeps on getting too far forward and goes down too quick. He's got to start building tanky so he can survive longer. But here's White caught out just finding Uranium. Riftwalk allows him to escape and it's hearted monkey. He's just gonna relentlessly pursue his way back to his own base. I think Tax just used his ultimate there. He tried to pick him up, but the dash got him out of it. Zone Dreams Mean takes the tower up in that top lane. Interesting trade in the middle lane, though. Loses the Evelyn ultimate foot, unfortunately, as well as the spray phase down for white. So looks like they will be backing out, possibly with those ultimates down. Have to defend their base, obviously. As uh, Stuyvesant have been looking very formidable in this game. 6,000 goal lead to set it out. Three towers up as well. Only tires uh, that Thomas and Sweden have taken are in that top and middle lane out of tires, but they haven't been able to make a push onto any of the other towers. Bottom lane tower is about half health right now, and they just pretty much play has not been focused around there. Dragon goes down, and everyone wants to get on to that middle lane, and that's what we've been seeing. It will be Stivus and Duffin and Driver's Seat here as they find out BB Zone needs me with a lot of damage coming out from that last fight. 7, 4, and 3 has the Stingers and the Runan's Hurricane which makes for a very strong KO. You know, Thomas S. Wooten are putting an excellent fight up right now, but they seem to be overcommitted to taking small little things. Wheel Kill for Tacos will get low and the intervention will allow him to escape, so they'll dive four versus five to try to pick up that kill. Uranium, he'll get low, but then just riff walk over a wall and he won't be able to fall up. I don't know that this is a fight that uh, Stuyvesant want right now because they've got Lucian on the other side of the map, but this is about the time we're gonna start seeing these teams group up around the Baron Pit, start getting that Baron Dance, which is exactly what we just saw as uh, Stuyvesant looked for a pick, but they just weren't, or Wooten looked for the pick, and they weren't able to find it. So, now middle lane will be seeing a oh, bit of Soju action. Force to use a wild growth, he gets the silence, and Cataclysm is dropped, Soju flashes away, Taco's following up, a good Soul Shackles is dropping down, but the Monsoon knocks Cloud away. is gonna be the only one who takes that, and Uranium, he says, I don't care, I'm going deep. He gets yeah. knocked out of the turret range by BB, but that's exactly where he wants to be, following up on the Soju, gets one more attack, and that's gonna be both uh, uh, Shivana and Lulu going down. This is suddenly Tax, the sole survivor for his team. Where was he over the course of this? I don't know, but the fact is, uh, Stuyvesant have got a very convincing advantage right now. They lost only their jungler. They're taking down the mid turret, taking down the inhibitor as well. They could even try to continue the push. They've got 10 seconds to do so, but no, they're gonna back off and continue to feel secure in their advantage. Right uh, now, uh, oh, go ahead. Night and day between the, this game and the last game. Really, Stuyvesant coming up strong there, and now that, that was just a really well done fight by them. Woke up for Tacos, waited for the Cataclysm, got it out the Soja, obviously flashed out of it, but they were able to pile on the damage. And even when they got inside of the base behind the inhibited tower, somebody it's me, Iranium said, We don't care, we're Kale Caspian, we are way too strong in this patch. They got over that wall, got some kills. It's not even a fed Caspian, it's a helping assist the with 11 assists right now. And it's just been somebody it's me shredding people down has so much damage just by the Void Staff as well, so he is going for penetration on all those auto attacks he'll be throwing out, and that means a lot of damage right now, and it's bad news for Thomas S. Wooden. Stuyvesant High School, he took the from last game, really just 
came up into this game so well. And they have a really nice lead going into this. With the middle inhibited down, they're going to be having a lot of pressure around that middle lane. Now they can just choose the arm push top or bot, most likely top, because Baron's up in, in the top lane area. That's probably what we'll be seeing here. They're going to be clearing out some wards as well, of course. Want to gain some, establish some vision control, possibly set up for another objective soon. Yeah, Stuyvesant are just taking incredible control of the map right now. Wooten are doing everything they can to contest it, but they're just slowly falling further and further behind. Now, we do have a death bush being set up as Uranium is waiting with uh, Will Kill for Tacos. White is going to spot him out with that stealth twitch. He knows he's got his team to back him up, but it's not a fight that he wants just yet. And suddenly it looks like this could very well be the 5v5 to end all 5v5s. But so oh my god, it's me going to be clearing out a jungle of smite steel. It means that's going to be Jarvan taking that blue away. And with that, another turret falls as Stuyvesant continue to pressure forward onto Wooten. Man, Wooten High School have to take the middle lane back into the base. And this is really good rotations coming up from Stuyvesant. They move right up to the bear and smart moves by them. They secure the objectives. Thomas and Sweden have to deal with the super minions in the middle lane, and actually Stuyvesant want to go for a fight, possibly. They're going to be hovering around, actually it looks like we'll be seeing what they do next, but they are into the Baron area, looking to establish some control. Thomas and Sweden is still just looking to push out these lanes. Looks like we'll be seeing a bit of grouping in the middle lane, we'll have to see what happens next. Both of these teams have fairly strong engaged compositions, but Stuyvesant definitely have a huge lead just with how fed the top and middle laners are. Oh, Saizo oh, going deep. Let's see if he gets the monsoon. Dusk Cloud too far forward. Gets a good soul shackles, but dies before it can proc. Here comes Agony's Embrace. It's going to be knocked away by another monsoon. Will kill for Tacos. Gets the Cataclysm, but Flash means there's escape. Soju taking a lot of hits. He's going to go down. Double kill picked up by Monkey Tax. Trying to trail around from behind. He flashes into the Wraith Pit. What Uranium is going to give Chase. He doesn't even care about the rest of the fight going on. He says, you know what? There's a kill here. I am going to take it. There's nothing that Tax can do. And just like that, Uranium on a killing spree. Surrender vote is going to be called. And that's going to be Stuyvesant taking game number two, leaving us at a one-to-one -one tie between these two teams. Now, this is a best of three. So be sure to stay tuned. In about five minutes, we'll be getting started with game number three to see who's going to advance to the semifinals. Again, the winner in, who makes it into the semifinals is going to have an opportunity to be flown down to San Diego for the live Grand Finals at the Grand Del Mar. So really, really fantastic stuff, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more awesome League of Legends.